one way we can access all the session variables is to use a special print function called printr. I believe we looked at this before. It's a handy little print function that allows you to um, look at the contents of an entire array quite quickly. So we're going to use that now and uh, we'll see how it works. Again, for the sake of speed, I'll just copy paste it in place. So we have the print R function and we're telling it to print the uh, session auto global. And what this will do is will expand, it will expose all the session values that are in that are in session currently. So we'll go back, let's refresh this. And here you go. You notice this little keyword here. You see PHP recognizes the session auto global as an array. That's why it has array here. And we see we have the value browser, which is equal to all this. And we have the variable time, which is equal to all this. To finish off this basic video on sessions, I just want to clarify a few points. Number one, you can reset session values all you want. So I could change this into a string and say uh, session time is now equal to Stefan. I refresh this. Oh, I got to go back actually. I reset it. See, session variable is now S Stefan. So you can overwrite session variables. You can set them to blank even. Again, I got to go back, set the session. See, there's no second session variable. Time is equal to nothing, as we see. So you can reset session variables on the fly. You could have them set here to Stefan. And then you can go over here. Down here, you can set them to, uh, to Jimmy. And like with anything PHP, you just, if you're not sure, just run the script and test. It's, uh, there's no such thing, by the way, as a PHP validator. Really, the validator is the scripting engine. It checks to make sure your code is all right. The reason I mention that, and I know this is a, I'm going off on a tangent a bit, is that a lot of people will, new to PHP say, do you guys know a P, if there's a PHP validator? Because they're thinking about uh, XHTML or HTML validators that you see for standard websites. PHP the validator is the engine. If there's a problem with your code, the engine will throw the error, will give you an error, as we saw. When I went like this, then we go refresh, back here, and we see warning, this is our validator. It's just saying, hey, whoa, we got a problem with the code here. So don't worry about validators in PHP. So we see that by, we can, by adding values to our session auto global, we can call those session values on any PHP pages that have session start tagged, uh, well, called at the top of the page. Sessions are set by default to last 24 minutes. This can be changed in the PHP INI, although I think that most people won't have access to that. But 24 minutes is, uh, is pretty much enough for most applications. Later on, if you get into more serious PHP programming where you need to adjust this, I'm sure you, you'll have access to it uh, given those circumstances. What I'm saying is that it's only in special cases you're going to need to adjust the session timeout period, meaning when the, actually, uh, the PHP action actually kills the values that are held in the session auto global. To be clear, session values are actually stored on the server in a, uh, in a file. And all that's stored on the user is actually an ID identifying that user's uh, unique identity. This ID, of course, is generated by the session mechanism. I'll call it an object for the sake of uh, simplicity. It's generated, generated by the session object in PHP. Session is not just an auto global array. It's actually it has a lot more capabilities. It has a timeout period. It has all kinds of... Uh, extra capabilities to persist itself. It's, it's really interesting. To be clear, session is not designed for long-term storage of information about a user. That's what you use MySQL for or uh, other database products. This is simply to keep information about a user while he's in session, right? Uh, he's at a particular session visiting your site. You think of a session like when you go see a physiotherapist and you have a session with them. 
Same type of thing. That's why they call it session. And finally, session IDs. These are the unique IDs applied to a particular user visiting your site. Again, it's generated by the session object and it's typically stored as a cookie. This is the best way to do it, although if for some reason you need to go with URL strings, that's the other um, option, which I discussed in the previous video, the PHP session object should handle that for you. To make things fun, let's just actually take a look at what the session ID looks at, looks like rather. So here we go, I'm calling the function session ID and I'm just echoing it out here. And I've done it beforehand here on the session.php page. Here's the, again the session ID. So let's uh, take a look at the browser. And here on session PHP, here's a session ID. Just remember it ends off with D1 E7. So I go back here, D1 E7. Same ID because it's the same session, of course. So this is the unique ID that I told you about that the session object in PHP creates to tag this individual. This is now in a cookie stored in the browser. And this ID will be persisted, will last rather in the PHP engine for about 24 minutes after the last interaction with the page. So if he clicks, comes here, that's the PHP page that, there's, that we've called session.start. As long as the user is uh, from this point on rather, he's got 24 minutes to to click into another page or to refresh this page or his session data will be lost. So this is could be used for something like a shopping cart where the guy is shopping and then you would add the values of what products he bought to session. And then when they finally purchase the products, you would save that, pro that purchase to a database for long-term storage.